In this video, we're going to look at several different functions. We're not going to graph these guys uh, to be really, you know, for precision. We're just going to be looking at a basic shape, and we want to determine domain, range, intervals over which we're increasing or decreasing, and if applicable, we want to talk about what the asymptotes are. So let's start with this guy right here. So this is a polynomial function of degree 4. Since it's even, we know we have two options for the end behavior. We know it's going to look like a parabola of sorts, so either going up like this or going down. Well, since this has a positive coefficient, we know that this will have a general shape where he's going up like that. What else do we know about it? Well, we know from the inside here that we have shifted to the left five units. And here on the outside, that means we've gone down seven units. All right. So left five, down seven. Let's draw a quick sketch of this just to get an idea about where we are and just kind of what we look like. So left five, down seven, right? So that means, let's kind of cross this out. That's going to be our vertex. And we're going to have that a U looking shape. So it's going to be something kind of like that. Okay. Give or take, right? It doesn't, again, we're not going for accuracy here. We're just going for do you understand where it's supposed to be located, what the shape is, and what information can we get from this? So remember, this is a polynomial function. So your domain is going to be all real numbers. Your range is something that we can pick up from our quick sketch. Again, we didn't have to be super accurate, but we're close enough that we can answer these questions. Your range is will be the set of values bottom to top. And so the lowest I get is negative 7. Now this is a point, so that's going to be included. That's negative 7 going all the way up to infinity. All right? So that's your domain. That's your range. And now we want to find the intervals over which we are increasing and decreasing. All right. So as we've talked about this before, to find where you're increasing and decreasing, you just have to slide your finger from left to right. So as I go from left to right, I see that I'm going down and then I'm going up. So over what intervals am I increasing? Well, I don't have any increasing until I get beyond uh, negative 5 right there, right? So I'm increasing on the open interval from negative 5 to infinity. Again, just for emphasis, make sure that you understand that you are going down here, and then you're going up over there. Okay. Don't look at these arrows right here and say you're going up. When we talk about increasing and decreasing, it's as we go from left to right. And then we are decreasing. Let's see, where are we decreasing? Well, you see that we're decreasing on that open interval from negative infinity to this x value of negative 5. Those open intervals are going to be over sections of your domain for increasing and decreasing. Okay? And so that's information that we can get from this one function. The next example that we have is negative 1 over x minus 4 plus 3. So let's think about what this shape is and the location. So we have a fraction. We have a rational function. And so we typically have two options for that. We have what we call the missed high five. We also have the volcano. And the difference between those is that the missed high five is just going to be like 1 over x whereas the volcano is 1 over x squared. Well, we don't have x squared here. We just have 1 over x. Like if I didn't even have that 4, we see 1 over x, so it's the missed high 5. And we're going to take the minus 4. We're going to go to the right 4. We have the plus 3, so that means up 3. And then we have this negative right here. And that negative means that you're going to reflect 
you reflect across the x-axis. So let's try to put all of that information together to get, up, uh, to get a good sketch for our graph. All right, so we're going up three, so up one, two, three. So this is going to be my new x-axis, which just happens to coincide with a horizontal asymptote. We need to go to the right four. So one, two, three, four. That's going to be my vertical asymptote, which is also going to connect with my new y-axis. I was supposed to have the missed high five. The missed high five would have been a curve here and a curve in the upper right. But since I'm reflecting across the x-axis, that means that instead of being up here, my curve is going to be here and it's going to be here. So that's where your graph is going to be located. All right, so let's talk about our domain and range. Unlike the polynomial functions that have a domain of all real numbers, most rational functions have some kind of hiccup, and that's going to be with whatever makes the denominator equal zero. Well, we knew the basic shape here, and we knew we had a vertical asymptote at x equals zero, and that's been shifted to the right four units, so x equals four is the guy that I cannot include. But plug in four here makes my denominator zero, which makes my expression undefined. So my domain is negative infinity to positive four union four to infinity. My range, as I go from bottom to top, is coming from negative infinity, it gets as high as this horizontal asymptote, which is three, and then you jump over that and you go from three up to infinity to finish that range. Now we also want to talk about what the asymptotes are, and of course these asymptotes are directly related and connected with the domain and range. So your asymptotes. Your horizontal asymptote is this guy that we have here in pink, and that is the equation y equals 3. And don't say that the horizontal asymptote is 3, it doesn't make any sense. Asymptotes are lines, and you must write an equation for a line that describes them. Your vertical asymptote, well that's this light blue line we see right here, and that happens when x equals 4. Again, x equals 4, that's where the blip was in the domain. Y equals 3, that was your hiccup in the range. Let's talk about where we're increasing and decreasing. Where is this graph increasing? Well, you see that as I trace along here, he is increasing as I go from left to right. You've got the hiccup, and then he's increasing again. So you would say that he's increasing from negative infinity to 4. That's 1 part of your domain where he's increasing and he is also increasing on the interval from 4 to infinity. We have to make very sure very, we have to be very careful that we don't put a union sign in between here because we're basically asking for solution sets. Where are you where are you increasing? I'm increasing here and I'm increasing here. Two different uh, solution sets for that. Not a union. Well, notice that where we said we were increasing was pretty much everywhere, which means we were decreasing nowhere. You might say, but you go from here to here, that's a decrease. When there's a jump like that, that does not count as a decrease. Okay, So this guy's increasing from here to here, increasing from here to here, and no place to be decreasing. All right, we have one last example. So if f of x is equal to 3 over the quantity x minus 1 squared minus 12, what is this going to look like? Well, you see that we have a fraction, and you've got a square here on the fraction, so that tells us it's going to be that volcano shape. And since there's no negative in front of it, it's not going to turn it upside down. It's still going to be a volcano. The 3 indicates a stretch 
So you're turning this volcano into an even skinnier, taller, stretched out volcano that has been, let's see, this tells me that I go to the right one, and the minus 12 tells me that I'm going to go down 12 units. All right, so let's do a quick sketch of this if I can. So going down 12, I don't really need to count all the way to 12, just I know that I'm down 12. And just make a little note here that this is negative 12. And I'm going to the right one. All right, so let's see what is our shape going to be. Well, we said it's a volcano, right? So the volcano means I'm mean, coming in like this. And when I'm going up like this, like the, the center of the volcano is where your um, vertical asymptote is going to be. So I expect it to look something kind of like this. And I'm going to see the same thing over here. So there's my volcano shape. All right, uh, what about your domain? Your domain is everything except for one, where you have that vertical asymptote. So it's from negative infinity to positive one union one to infinity. And my range, as I go from bottom to top, what is my range? The lowest I get is almost negative 12, so that's parentheses, negative 12, and then this guy blows up, and he goes all the way up to infinity. So there is our range. Now let's talk about our asymptotes. Your horizontal asymptote, we just mentioned it, is this guy right here. And so that's the equation y equals negative 12. Your vertical asymptote, again, corresponds to where you have that blip in your domain, it corresponds to what makes that denominator equal to zero, which is x equals one. And then where are we increasing and decreasing? All right, so again, as you trace from left to right, what are you doing? Well, from left to right, this guy is going up, and then he goes down. So we have an increasing section and then a decreasing section. So he's increasing on the open interval of your domain that's from negative infinity up to positive one. And then, and then we're gonna be decreasing starting when x equals one or just beyond one uh, toward infinity. Oh, sorry about that. So there you have it. You're increasing from negative infinity to one you're decreasing from one to infinity, you have your horizontal asymptote, your vertical asymptote, and your domain and range. And all of this is coming not from throwing things into a graphing calculator, it comes from understanding what the basic shapes are, right? So once we know those basic shapes, we do a quick sketch, we identify the domain, range, asymptotes, and it really shouldn't be that bad, but if you don't know those key shapes, go back and review the videos, that way you're ready to go on to the next section.